Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we'll be talking about the result which is based on product of disjoint cycles. So we have this result which tell us that every permutation of a finite set. So here finite set is important condition. So they are saying every permutation of finite set that that can be written as a cycle is it is either a complete cycle, right? Or it could be written as product of disjoint cycles. The cycles will not have any element in common to each other, right? So this is the result. So let's proceed forward and prove this result. We already knew that uh, in the previous video when we were multiplying two different cycles, the process, this theorem is exactly what we have obtained. We have obtained uh, the permutation as a cycle or the product of cycles, whereas the cycles, they are disjoint in nature. So that means they do not repeat any element within it, right? So keep, keeping and taking this thing into account, let's try and prove this thing. So in order to prove the result, we consider alpha as some permutation. We'll be sh uh, showing that alpha is either a cycle or it is the product of cycles where each of the cycle that is disjoint in nature, right? So this is what we wanted to prove. And we take the set A as uh, the, uh, the number starting from 1 to n, right? So uh, in order to write this alpha in disjoint cycle form, what we do, we start by taking any member from the given set A. So let's uh, out of the numbers 1, 2 up to n, let's suppose we take the number A1 from it. So what would be the number A2? The number A2 would be alpha times of A1. Because uh, when once you have a number, you apply alpha to it, you would get another number from the same set. Again, when you apply alpha onto it, you will get the third number, right? So this is what we are saying for the number A1. When you apply alpha onto it, you will get another number, which is A2. Again, when you apply alpha onto A2, you would get the third number A3. And in terms of the first number, this third number could be written like this. A3 is alpha times of A2. And A2 is what? It is alpha times of A1. So we have written the value here. So you see it is alpha square times of A1. So we can proceed like this until we arrive at some power m. So we keep on doing this until we take, uh, we, uh, we apply alpha uh, m uh, times to the element a1 for some m this m could be anything if this m is equivalent to n so that means we have written down all the elements so that means a permutation is just one single cycle with all the elements written in some order here without repetition so this proves one part right if it is not then let's see what we have so that means few of the elements of the set a has uh, been left behind right they have been left behind so uh, moreover why this m is there we are sh certain that we have certain uh, index m here because the sequence a1 alpha a1 alpha square a1 would be finite because our set here is finite right because we are defining this on the finite set so that means even if we have infinite number of elements within it so few of them might be equal to each other so that means we would have a repetition in that case so we are calling the repetition by this uh, thing that alpha raised to power i of a1 would be equal to alpha raised to power j of a2 where i and j they are some powers such that i is less than j so obviously one is less than the other we are assuming that i is less than j correct this is one thing another thing is that if uh, we at a raised to power m of a1 if this thing not this is not a this is alpha if alpha raised to power m of a1 if this thing is actually equal to a1 only where what is m m is j minus 1 in that case we would say our cycle would be completed and hence we would have one cycle such that we start from a1 and we reach at some element which we which is a raised to power alpha raised to power m of a1 right after this we again get a1 so this completes one cycle although some of the elements of a they are still remaining in the set which are not included in this particular cycle so uh, for this uh, complete cycle, we express the permutation as a1, a2 up to a m, where all the entries are, uh, uh, which are uh, obtained by applying alpha onto a1 is written here. 
and we have applied a dash 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 here because we may have other cycles also in this case because all the elements in A they are not depleted. We now also have few elements within the set A. In that case, uh, when all the elements of A they are not completely exhausted. If they are exhausted, we are done with the proof. Why? Because we obtain one cycle which contains all the elements and they are disjoint in nature. But suppose that uh, we have not exhausted our set A, right? There are few elements remaining in the set A. So what we do from the remaining elements? We select one element, say B1, right? Which has not appeared in our first cycle. And we take this element B1 and use it to create a new cycle just like uh, we have done before. So taking this B1, we, when we apply alpha onto B1, what would we obtain? We would obtain some element which is B2. Again, when we apply alpha onto B2, we would obtain third element which is B3. So we can keep on doing like this. Again, this B3 could be alpha B2, right? And what is B2? It is alpha times of B1. So it is alpha square of B1. So your B3 is alpha square of B1. So we can create a sequence like this, starting with the element B1 here, right? Until we reach at some alpha raised to power k of b1 where in that case this thing is nothing but equal to the first element with which we started right k would be some index which uh, and when we obtain such a thing this completes our cycle because we started with b1 when then we have b2 which is nothing but alpha times of b1 then we have b3 which is alpha square times of b1 and we keep on doing like this uh, until we have b k minus 1 which is alpha k raised to power b uh, alpha k raised to power b k minus 2 and what is this this thing is actually equal to b1 so this thing maps again back to the first element b1 here right so that means it completes our cycle here so thus we obtain a new cycle which is b1 b2 up to uh, b raised to power k minus 1 right so uh, this completes one cycle so this new cycle would have no elements which are common with the previously constructed cycle why this is so because if that is so if we have some elements which are common with the previous cycle so the previous cycle would have all the elements of this kind alpha raised to power some i a1 and in the second cycle we have the elements of this kind alpha raised to power j b1 right so suppose we suppose that one element from the first cycle is equal to one element from the second cycle for some i and j so in that case we have alpha raised to power i minus j times of a1 is equal to b1 so that means this v1 is one of uh, the at right why because uh, we are now writing it as alpha raised to some power of a1 so that means it should be a t but this is not how we have supposed b1 because b1 was not any of the element which was selected from the previous cycle or containing all the a's so what we can do we can continue the process until all the elements of a they are exhausted if they are not exhausted we will be starting with another cycle naming by c and so on so finally a permutation alpha would look something like this a1 up a2 up to am for the first cycle for the second cycle it would be b1 b2 up to bk and we can keep on doing like this the last cycle we can call it by c1 c2 up to cs where some uh, where this m k and s they are some of the indexes right and all of these cycles they are disjoint to each other so that is what we have proved here in the uh, uh, in the proof here right so therefore every permutation this could be written as a product of disjoint cycles right and this is what we wanted to prove here in this result so i hope you understood the result well well that is it for this video thank you for watching